In today's video, we're going to take a look at the latest Divi updates. But before we do that, I want to talk about my bonus. And that is, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my Divi Blueprint 3 course and also my Photoshop for web designers course. All you have to do is to click the link in the video description below. Once you've bought the uh, Divi, all you need to do is to come over here to MacUniversity.com. All the way down here on the bottom right, if you click this button here, all you have to do is to send me a quick message uh, with your receipt number, or if you want, you can attach it, and then I will give you access to the Divi Blueprint 3 course, a course that will teach you how to design websites using Divi. All right, so let's talk about all the latest updates. So over here, this is my uh, local WordPress install. I haven't updated Divi yet. So what you want to look out for is over here where it says update. So sometimes you may get this option, uh, this um, option here saying one, which is the update, but sometimes you don't. So what you need to do is to click here where it says update, and this will just uh, push and um, uh, check if there's any updates for you. And over here, we can see that uh, we have an update, which is version 3.2.3. So all we need to do is to click here and click update themes. I won't bother with the WooCommerce right now because um, we just wanna talk about the latest Divi update. Now, this update is, is called the uh, Options Harmony version two. So it's really, really quite exciting. So what we're gonna do to demonstrate this, I'm gonna come here and create a brand new page. So this page, I'm just gonna call this update. Okay, click on use Divi Builder. So this is where I can show you where these updates are. So first, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the text UI um, updates. So I'm gonna come over here, just click a single column, and I'm gonna choose the text mode, okay? Right, so in the text mode here, before we didn't used to have options of how we can stylize this text. This was only available on specific uh, modules. So now, wherever there is text, the update now is we can go in and make further customization. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here, we're gonna add a link. So I'm gonna highlight the text. Click here on, um, on this link icon, and then I'm gonna add a blank link, just like that, okay? Now, we need also need to have an ordered list, so I'm gonna just gonna press enter here, so, so I can just show you how we can customize it. Okay, great. So now I'm just gonna highlight all this and add my ordered list. So this is how it looks like. So let's say you want to go in and customize this particular text here and also um, these bullet, uh, bulleted points on ordered list. So what you do is you come over here to design and then you want to come over here to text. Now notice that we have these extra options here. Now this means we can go into each and every item and customize it. So let's say first of all we want to, do, we want to add a um, style to this link that I've just added. All you need to do is to click on the second tab here. Now you can make it bold or semi-bold. You can change the color. So I'm going to come over here and let's say I'm gonna go with that color right there. Next, I am going to uh, underline it. Now I can add an underline. I can make it italic if I want to, just to uh, make it easier to, uh, to, take, uh, to visualize. Okay, so all this you can now do on that specific item. Now over here, as you can see, when I put my mouse over here, it's actually showing me on the builder where I'm about to edit. So if I click here, now I can go on my unordered list and start making changes. So first of all, let's say I need to change my font altogether. I can just click on Lato and you can see now it's been changed. And uh, we can also change. In fact, if you want to um, come over here and choose a different type of font, you can always go and do that. Here, as we did before, we can make this semi-bold. We can change the size. We can make it all caps if we need to, but in this case, I don't think that's necessary, okay? Now, over here, we can center it if we need to do that. We can change the color, as you can see. We can also play around with the text size here. We can make it bigger, we can make it smaller. 
So we have plenty of control now on these text settings. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is responsive editing. So previously, it used to be available on um, very limited options, but now it's pretty much on each and every uh, design option. So let me show you how that works. So if I come over here to this gear icon, to go into my settings, click on design. Now, if I come on sizing here, you notice that it's here on the width. So let's say I want to add a specific width here. Let's say it's 94%. I can come in here, do that for the tablet, for the phone, and so on. Now, let me close that. If I come to the text, I can go in as well and make my adjustments. So let's say in this case, I need to change my text font. I can always come here into the text font, adjust for the phone, the tablet, and the desktop. Now, moving ahead, let's say I want to... Um, have different colors for, for different uh, uh, screen types. So I can just come here as well on the, on the actual text color, click here on this little icon for the desktop. Let's say I wanna go with that for the tablet. We're gonna go with this one here. And then for the phone, we're gonna go with gray. So this is how you can go in and make these changes. So as you can see here, when I go through these different um, views, desktop, uh, tablet and mobile, we have different text colors. So you can actually go in precisely and make specific changes to different types of views. So I think this is huge and this is really, really exciting. So you can go ahead now, even the alignment, you can come here, click on the alignment here and decide how you want this aligned for whatever you know device it is that you're working on. So this is brilliant. Okay, let's move on to the next thing and uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the help option. And this is for every single uh, design option. So let me show you where it is again. And this sometimes, you know, in fact, uh, it's quite difficult to spot. But now every time you see this question mark and you click on it, it describes what this actual item does. And this we didn't have before. All we had was all the way down here, the main help option, which is still available, by the way. And if you click here, this is where you have a video that teaches you and shows you how this Diffie Builder uh, works. And then here it, it tell tells you about the introduction of the text module because we are in the text settings. So this option here is not only in the text settings, it's everywhere, pretty much everywhere. So let me show you again somewhere that we may uh, see this. So I'm gonna go into my row options here. And then again, if I click on this link, notice that the question mark is there. If I click on it, it says when clicked, the module will link to this URL. So like I said, it's everywhere. Uh, row link target, if you click on that, it tells you exactly what it is. And then you can just read that. Same thing, background. So it's on the content tab, it's on the design tab. So here I can choose anything. I can go to box shadow, again, click on this question mark, and it tells me exactly what that item does. So I think this is really cool. And then finally, as I mentioned before, if you want to go into depth and know what, uh, what to do with the row settings, if you click on this question mark here on uh, this blue background, this is what gives you the actual videos explaining how that particular item works and how to apply it into your design process. Okay, so that's the uh, help text for every option. Now let's move on to the next thing and this is the triple dot. And again, this is something that you may have not noticed because it's, you know, because graphically it's not something that's, you know, big. So again, this, these are these three little dots. So if you click them here, you notice that you have options pop up and this is really, really cool because some of these we used to be able to access them through the right click. You see, I'm right clicking right now, but now you can just click the three little dots and that will show up. And again, this is pretty much on every option. Again, if I come over, over here to the top row settings, if I click the three little dots, it gives me all the options that I need. So be it resetting row styles, it could be pasting a background, copying the roles, I mean, there's, there's a lot you can do. Now, this is also across the whole board. Uh, it also works on um, modules. So for example, let's say I'm adding an audio module. I mean, we don't normally talk about this, but again, you can see here, we have these three little dots. If I click on them, it tells me you know, what I can do over here. And as I mentioned, it's everywhere. Here we, here we go again, it's there. We have it here on the top. We also have it on 
the sections. So again, right here, if I click on it, you can see it says safety library, split test. I can disable it, I can lock it. So, so there's a lot of features and this allows us to work really, really fast in Divi. So that's really cool. Now, the next option I'm going to talk about or the next update I'm going to talk about is quite interesting because this is something that used to frustrate me before this update. So this is to do with forms. So I'm going to come over here and add a single column and add a contact form. Right. So here on this contact form, you notice that it was quite difficult or, I mean, it was quite lengthy to go in and increase or decrease the size of these um, uh, these options here where you add your email address and names. So now if I come over here to design and I click on fields, we notice that all these colors here are in the right place. So I can quickly go in and add all my branding colors to my form and make it look really, really cool. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do this quick exercise. So first of all, I'm going to start by adding a background color. So I'm just going to add my color just like that. Now I'm going to come into my form and make some changes. So if I come over here to design and click on fields, notice that I can just go in and add my background color just like that, really, really fast. Okay, so these are the forms background color. So just, just, so just selecting my color, I've just added that and this is how easily I've customized this. Now the fields text color can also be adjusted here. Boom, one click and I've already adjusted the fields text color. So let's say I want it white, which I don't think is the right option here. We need a dark color. Boom, it's already done. Now you can also add your focus uh, text color. But the most important thing here is if you come here to the fields padding, this is where now you can add uh, or increase the size inside these rectangles here. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say you want to add 20 padding right there. You can see it's just been added. And if you want to add it both to the top and the bottom, you can just click on this chain icon and you can see it's been added. And you can play around with this and see how much you want to add. So you can see here that's ridiculous, but of course you can make it really small if you want to, you know, depending on the design you're working with. Whereas before, you would need to go in and, you know, it was quite uh, a lengthy process to just achieve these basic things. Now you can also come over here to the fields margin and this will add margins to just the fields. You can see here, I can bring them really, really close. And if I increase it, I can just make them really go far apart. So this is really, really cool and I really like this addition. It just makes the design of our forms very, really, really uh, custom. Right, okay, let's move on. The next thing and this is the background color uh, palette. Now before, again, I used to copy and paste the background color and this used to be quite frustrating. But now we have the color options on the background. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I come over here to the background, we didn't used to have this, okay? But now we have it. So I can choose my recently used colors and you know add my colors just like that. Whereas before, you'd copy the hexadecimal value, click here, and then paste it over here. And here as well, we have these color options. So I can easily access my color palettes here and the color suggestions and just add my colors just like that. So now all background colors have a color palette option and this is really cool. Now, for those of you that speak more than one language, there's also another update, which is missing translations. Uh, so we can actually go in and, um, and uh, take a look at those translations. Now, in our case, Divi has added um, Google Translate. Uh, of course, it's not 100% there, but at least, you know, it gives an idea of what these options are in, in terms of uh, the uh, translations in Divi. Unfortunately, I can't do a... Uh, a demonstration about that because I only speak, you know, one main language. So, right. So pretty much these are the um, um, updates that DZ, that Divi was working on. But, you know, behind the scenes, there's quite a lot. I mean, I can't cover, you know, all of them in this uh, update. But uh, these are the main ones to look out for. So go, go ahead, update Divi, play around with them. And uh, last time I had a question of uh, people saying, does this make my... Uh, DV website slower. No, it doesn't make it slower. Actually, we're just adding, you know, these features. It's highly optimized. So go ahead and try it out. 
All right, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification. See you in the next video.